So we're reading from 2 Peter chapter 1. This letter is from Simon Peter, a slave and apostle of Jesus Christ. I am writing to you who share the same precious faith we have. This faith was given to you because of the justice and fairness of Jesus Christ, our God and Saviour. May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and in Jesus Christ our Lord. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvellous glory and excellence. And because of this uh, glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enables you to share, enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. In view of all of this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with patient endurance and patient endurance with godliness and godliness with brother, brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for everyone. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sins. So, dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these things and you will never fall away. Then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Therefore, I will always remind you about these things, even though you already know them and are standing firm in the truth you have been taught. And it is only right that I should keep on reminding you as long as I live. For our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me that I must soon leave this earthly life, so I will work hard to make sure that you always remember these things for after I am gone. For we were not making up clever stories when we told you about the powerful coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We saw his majestic splendour with our own eyes when we received honour and glory from God the Father. The voice from the majestic glory of God said to him, This is my dearly loved Son, who brings me great joy. We ourselves heard that voice from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. Because of that experience, we have even greater confidence in the message proclaimed by the prophets. You must pay close attention to what they have wrote, for their words are like a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and Christ the morning star shines in your hearts. Above all, you must realise that no prophecy in scripture ever came from the prophet's own understanding or from human initiative. No, these prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit and they spoke from God. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks, Josh. A number of people who uh, can't be with us today, and uh, the Lancasters, they've had to isolate all week. Fancy the best uh, week of the year, and you have to isolate. And, uh, well, uh, they uh, are isolating and they finish soon. And then, uh, uh, what about uh, your school holidays? And not one of those dreary holidays where it's raining and grey and awful and you stay in, but one with bright sunshine and, well, little Elijah had a phone call from school to say someone in his class had uh, got COVID, so he and the family had to isolate, so hey. Uh, and then there's Keith, sunning himself all week in the garden, okay, or on the golf course. Uh, but uh, hey, uh, not good for some, so a number of people who aren't able to be with us, they haven't got COVID, but they've had to isolate and, uh, and so on. Well, we come to this, uh, we come to this second letter of, uh, of Peter, and uh, just to set the context, uh, the church had already had uh, persecution, and uh, it was persecution that drove the believers out of Jerusalem and to, to the areas where uh, the Lord had told them to go. And uh, there was just an evangelist, Philip, who had gone there uh, ahead of time. Uh, so there's my input for the evangelist. Uh, they were ahead of their time in uh, going to present the gospel uh, to, uh, to the Samaritans. Uh, but uh, the early church stayed 
uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, but it was persecution, and Satan thought he was going to win, but no, 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 he will never win. He's a defeated uh, enemy. Uh, but we see how that uh, the persecution, it drove uh, the believers out. And so what happened? We see how, uh, how the gospel uh, ended up going to far-reaching places. Satan uh, very quickly caught on that, uh, hey, uh, persecuting the church isn't going to, uh, isn't going to stop uh, God's work going on, but uh, what about error? What about heresy? Uh, what about uh, the teachings of the church? Uh, what if uh, things can come in and uh, how devastating can that be? And well, 2,000 years of history uh, shows us what happens when there's error in the church, when there's uh, when the teaching isn't according to the word of God, uh, when people interpret things in a, uh, in a, in a diffi uh, different way. And well, we've seen how that ravaged the church through 2,000 uh, years. And uh, well, there was going to be uh, more and more of this, and Peter's uh, letter is uh, really, his second letter is really uh, to help us to be on guard, to be aware and to be alert. And uh, well, how can we be sure of the things that we're being taught, it's to know the Word of God for ourselves. And it's to know Him for ourselves, not something that we're relying on that uh, belongs to someone else. And so uh, here in the, the second letter, uh, it's about uh, the, the knowledge that we have of Him, uh, of our God. And uh, if we know Him, then uh, we uh, will stand in these uh, in these uh, troublesome uh, days. And so he starts off speaking about the, the necessity of growing in our knowledge of God and, our, and Jesus, uh, our Lord. And uh, if we go to the final chapter, chapter 3, we see uh, Peter's final words as he concludes his second letter. He says, I am warning you ahead of time, dear friends, be on guard so that you will not be carried away by the errors of these wicked people and lose your own secure footing. Rather, you must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. All glory to him both now and forever. Amen. So the, uh, the letter finishes how it starts. And uh, this encouragement to grow in our knowledge of God and of our Saviour, uh, Jesus uh, Christ. Always remember uh, Dave... Uh, doing, uh, I think it was Ephesians, and the things that God wants you to know. And uh, it's not just, uh, uh, it's not just uh, something uh, for the sake of gaining knowledge, uh, but uh, truths that uh, we have because we're in Christ. And, uh, well, uh, Paul and Peter saw the necessity of uh, not just being saved, and it's wonderful to be saved people, uh, and that moment when we first believed that the Lord Jesus had uh, died for us, uh, and when we put our trust and faith in him, that, that was just the start of our journey. There is so much more that God wants us to know about what it is to be in Christ and all the blessings uh, that we have in him. And, uh, well, uh, there are things that God wants us to know this morning and uh, to keep on uh, growing in that knowledge and uh, well, if we do that, then we will be secure and we'll also be able to discern the errors that are coming in. And uh, as uh, Satan seeks to spoil uh, even uh, the church. And uh, well, uh, let's have a look at this first chapter and see, uh, and see uh, what it's, uh, how he starts. And uh, basically, it's uh, Peter's, Peter is concerned for the walk. Uh, the, the walk that people have uh, with uh, God. And uh, so he says, This letter is from Simon Peter, a slave and apostle of Jesus Christ. I'm writing to you who share the same precious faith we have. This faith was given to you because of the justice and fairness of Jesus Christ, our God and Saviour. May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our uh, Lord. So he's writing this second letter to those who are believers who share the same precious faith we have. Uh, it wasn't just something for the apostles, but it was for uh, all believers uh, in the uh, Lord Jesus. 
and the emphasis is on the knowledge of God. God really wants us uh, to know him, to be Christians who are growing in our knowledge of him. And uh, God, uh, God wants that knowledge uh, to be seen by the way in which we live and serve uh, him. I wonder uh, this morning, uh, I wonder whether we could ask ourselves the question, uh, am I growing in my knowledge and experience of him? Or have we plateaued? Have we come to a point and we've not really grown? We're not growing. God's intent, God's desire is that we continue uh, to grow in our knowledge and experience of him. And if that is uh, so, then how is it being shown uh, in my life? Uh, because uh, God's truth, the knowledge of him uh, and of his ways will actually impact our lives and it will be seen, uh, it will be evidenced uh, by the way uh, in which uh, we live. So in verse uh, 3, uh, Paul, uh, Peter says, by his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. And uh, well, this is, this is incredible, isn't it? It's not, hey, find your own way, this is how to live, and this is what I want, I want you to live like Jesus, but hey, you're on your own. No, 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 no. God has given us everything uh, we, uh, we, uh, we need, and uh, it's a different life that we'll live, and uh, we have the Holy Spirit of God who indwells us. Uh, when we come to uh, Jesus Christ uh, for salvation, by his divine power, God comes to live in us by his spirit and he helps us to live the life uh, that uh, he wants us to live. And uh, well, the whole purpose is we become more and more like Jesus. Uh, we can't do it on our own. Uh, we can't depend on, our, uh, on our, uh, our own strength. It won't work. But it's allowing him to take control of every area of our lives. And we'll see how he makes us more and more like Jesus. If you don't look very much like Jesus, and uh, if you've not changed, well, uh, the reason being we've not allowed him to take control and to work in our lives. Yes, we still have the old nature, the sin nature, which is very much alive and well in, uh, in us, uh, but we have God's new nature, uh, his uh, divine power. Uh, he's given us everything that we need to live a godly life. We don't need to live uh, like we uh, once lived. Uh, we can live a very different life because it's his power that is working in us. And uh, I wonder this morning whether that's an encouragement uh, to us. And uh, well, we see uh, how that uh, at uh, conversion, he subtracts our sin, but he adds his righteousness. But then uh, John has already pointed out that there's multiplication that uh, Peter's speaking about and growing and adding uh, and, uh, and so on. So uh, Peter says we are not only to believe in him, but to know him. How do we do that? It's by knowing his word. And uh, God has given us uh, the word of God and the spirit of God who is going to uh, teach us uh, about, uh, about uh, him. Verse 4. Uh, we uh, see that uh, verse, uh, verse three, um, we need for living a godly life. We received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvellous glory and uh, excellence. And so uh, we have all that we need to live a godly life this morning. So the question is, why am I not living a godly life? And uh, when we see things in our lives, well, it's because we've allowed the old nature uh, to uh, to rise up and uh, well as uh, as uh, as we've uh, uh, as we've gone along with that then we've uh, well we've not uh, used what we've been given and uh, well if we're in the word when God God's spirit can take that word and he can use it to uh, to make the right choices the right decisions in our lives and uh, and to put away the uh, the old uh, the old things. So uh, verse uh, 4, uh, Peter says, And because of his glory and excellent, he has, uh, excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human uh, desires. So three things 
uh, that he has uh, for us uh, here. And uh, first of all, there's the great and precious uh, promise, promises. And uh, really, uh, number one is, what an eternity is ours. Uh, God has promised eternal life to all who believe. There's one of them. And his promises can be uh, relied upon. He cannot fail to keep his promises. And if you look through the, uh, through the New Testament and through the letters and you see uh, all of the promises, the promises that God has made to those who are in Christ, to those who are believers, uh, well, uh, we see how that uh, uh, God has promised many wonderful things to us. And as we read the word, we can uh, count the promises uh, of, uh, of God. Uh, I've not checked this out, but I think Herbert Lockyer used to do all books on all the men of the Bible, all the women of the Bible, all the promises of the Bible, all the prophecies of the Bible. And uh, these are thick books. And, uh, well, uh, uh, he just uh, mentions the, uh, the, the promise and then uh, the, uh, some uh, comments on it. Uh, but, uh, yes, God has... Uh, God has promised us so much and uh, you know people we may have been promised much by certain people in our lives and they've not amounted to much but look who's making the promises it's the eternal God it's the one who cannot lie it's impossible for God to lie and so when he says something he means what he says you don't need to worry that God might change his mind later on and think Hey, that, I shouldn't have made that promise to these people. No, no, no. God will make uh, unconditional promises. And if he's made an unconditional promise, then it's sure to come to pass. Uh, it might be a long period of time, but hey, it will come to pass. Why? Because God has promised it. And so we have precious promises, and we see how that every promise will come true. Why? Because... God is the one who has promised. He is, he is true to his word. But then uh, secondly, the promise of, uh, promises that enable you to sh uh, uh, share his divine uh, nature. And uh, what an experience we have when we come to Christ for salvation. And we, whether we think about it at the, at the time when we, uh, when we came to, to, to know the Lord as Saviour, uh, but the truth of the matter is, at that moment, the Holy Spirit of God came to indwell us, to live in us. And uh, maybe we were just uh, thinking about our sins, and those sins that would take us to eternal judgment, to hell. And, well, <laughs> well here's a way of, uh, of being uh, released from that judgment. Here's a way of being forgiven by putting our trust, our faith in what Jesus Christ has done for us. That, that's wonderful to know that we're forgiven, that we have eternal life. But whether we know it or not, at that moment we receive the Holy Spirit and he comes to indwell us. Uh, what a wonderful, uh, what a wonderful uh, experience. And he's with us, never to leave us. And uh, we can grieve him, we can do all sorts of, but he'll never leave us. Uh, he's uh, indwelling us moment by moment. Uh, day by day and his power is available uh, to us but then thirdly Peter says to escape the world's corruption caused by human uh, desires what an escape is there for us we don't have to go uh, far to see how corrupt uh, this uh, world is and uh, things aren't getting better they're getting worse aren't they and uh, Peter says that we can escape it uh, all. And uh, so uh, as he continues in his letter, we see how that Peter is concerned for our walk with God. And uh, he's put forward uh, these amazing truths uh, that uh, belong to the believer, uh, that are uh, true about us. We have God in us, working in us. Yes, we have the old nature, but we've got a, a new nature. And we have his uh, power, awesome, so that we can live a godly life. We don't have to live in the rubbish dump. We don't have to do all the things that uh, our sinful nature uh, would uh, encourage us uh, to do. It's interesting, isn't it, that most, uh, uh, most people think that, or very often think, I think uh, 
perhaps things have moved on, uh, but lots of people think that living the Christian life is, uh, uh, is a boring life and, uh, well, I can't do this. It's all subtraction. I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do the other. And then, oh, it's a miserable uh, life. And uh, that's how uh, people uh, certainly used to. I think it's got worse than that. People haven't even heard of the Christian life. And there's more and more people who don't know anything more than what they've got. They'll, they'll try this and they'll try that, but as far as this Christian life is concerned, they've not even met Christians, and that's here in the UK. And, uh, well, we've seen in recent days and shared with one another people who've, who we've come into contact with, and they just haven't got a clue how dark the world is, how dark the UK is. And, uh, well, uh, uh, and yet, uh, for those who do have some knowledge, uh, they uh, think that if I became a Christian, I couldn't do this, I couldn't do that. They prefer the darkness, they pr prefer the corruption and everything else in this world. Why? Because they don't see what it means to be in Christ and what God uh, gives us and what God has planned for us. And uh, sometimes, even as believers who have the knowledge uh, of this, well, uh, they think still that, hey, there's, uh, there's things that are attractive in the world and hey, uh, I, I, can't, I can't go with this. I can't uh, live like this because they, they're too attracted to the world. And sometimes as believers, the world takes a hold of us, doesn't it? And uh, well, we miss out. It's not, uh, it's not subtracting by, uh, by living a godly life. No, no, no. It's a very worthwhile. It's adding to us. Uh, much, much more than taking away. And, uh, well, to live a godly life is a worthwhile life. And I wonder if that's uh, uh, one of our desires here this morning as, uh, as we go on in the Christian life. Are we wanting to live as God wants us to live? How do we know that? We need a knowledge of him, of our Lord Jesus uh, Christ. And uh, when we see what he wants for us, and he wants us to live a godly life, he wants us to become godlike in our, uh, in our lives, uh, I wonder whether we those are going to say, hey, he's done so much for me, and uh, he wants to do even more, and more. I'm going to allow him to take control. I'm going to go his way rather than my own way. And so uh, we see how that, uh, yes, uh, so many feel that it's, it's taking away. But the Bible tells us that we have a Heavenly Father who, yes, He cares for us and uh, is interested in us, but He wants to bless us. And Paul, speaking uh, to, uh, to the believers in Ephesus, uh, speaks about all the spiritual blessings. And yes, if we've been saved, we can look in those in those early days and think what well, how God has blessed us hang on that's not the end of the story there is so much more uh, that God uh, has uh, for us and uh, he wants us to go on and so Peter here also is just encouraging us to increase our knowledge of him and as we increase our knowledge of him there are many blessings uh, in store uh, for us so are we living for Jesus in a way that pleases him uh, this morning. Uh, we don't uh, have to carry around with us a load of guilt uh, that is carried by so many just because they seek to please themselves. But there's a different life. There's a godly life that we're able to live because we have God's power working in us. We have a new nature. Yes, we've got that old thing lurking in the background always wanting to uh, to rise up and overpower us. But yes, we have God uh, in uh, us. Verses uh, 5 uh, through to uh, 7. In, the view, in view of all of this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence, and moral excellence with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with patient endurance, and patient endurance with godliness. And godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for uh, everyone. 
Peter uh, tells us that, uh, hey, the Christian life isn't one that's static. We've got to a point where uh, that's it, we've arrived. No, no, uh, the Christian life uh, isn't a static experience. We should be growing and, uh, and moving on. And uh, it is a challenge, isn't it? And uh, so often as we look back over our lives, uh, somehow we've, we've, we've just stopped moving on. And uh, uh, we've uh, just stayed where we are. And sometimes it almost appears like we've gone backwards and uh, in our desires and so on. But no, no, uh, Peter uh, is encouraging us to keep growing, keep moving on. And yes, we can look back and say, hey, over six months, over, uh, over uh, so many years or, or whatever, uh, how have we grown? How have we uh, matured as uh, believers? And uh, hey, whatever, however miserable we might feel as we think about that, today is a new day. And today can be a new beginning when we say, hey, I want God to speak to me through his word. I want to, I want what Peter is saying. I want to grow in my knowledge of him. And so from this moment forward, uh, we can commit to, to uh, seeking to get to know him better and allowing him to take his truth and plant it in our hearts, our lives. And when those moments of distraction come, when then those moments come when Satan would hinder us, and take us off on, a, on another course. We have God's word in our hearts and the knowledge of him. And well, we can, we can uh, ask him to help us to make those right uh, choices, those right decisions uh, in uh, our, uh, our uh, life. And uh, so uh, here we uh, see uh, that, uh, yes, uh, we need to keep uh, growing. And uh, here is these... Uh, supplements uh, that uh, that Peter uh, is in, uh, encouraging uh, moral excellence and uh, discerning what what right and wrong is uh, we need that don't we and uh, well uh, we then uh, knowledge and self-control and patience uh, or patient endurance and uh, godliness uh, brotherly affection for one another and uh, also love for uh, for uh, everyone and uh, we need to cooperate with that divine power, with that person who indwells us uh, so that uh, we can live uh, godly lives, so that we can be uh, transformed. Look at uh, verse 8. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus uh, Christ. Are we wanting to be useful for him? Are we wanting to be productive not stay as you are, stay static, no. Just keep moving on, keep growing in our knowledge of God and our Saviour, uh, Jesus uh, Christ. Verse 9, but those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their old sinners. Uh, old sins. Peter is encouraging his uh, readers to ensure that they have uh, the real thing. Don't be short-sighted or blind. Don't forget. Keep moving on. Keep pressing uh, on. Verses uh, 10 and 11. So, dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these things and you will never uh, fall away. Then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal uh, kingdom of our Lord and Saviour. Uh, Jesus uh, Christ and uh, yes uh, many believers are content just to make a profession of faith and uh, leave it at that well that isn't what God intends for any of us and uh, it's interesting isn't it if we were uh, if we uh, looked at our bank accounts and we were told that if we did this 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 and this we could double our savings in a week what would we do Oh, no, 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 I'm not interested in that. That's just on savings. Well, so I haven't got any savings, but uh, hey, if we know of an investment plan, we, we go for it. Uh, we've got minds, we've got common sense and so on, and we no doubt would think, hey, well, I can do that, that and that. Well, God is saying, look, you're, you're a believer, you're, you're saved, you have eternal life, but there's so much more. Keep growing, keep moving on. And, uh, well, uh, you'll be productive. Uh, you'll live a godly life. 
and uh, well the one day there'll, there'll be that tremendous welcome and uh, there won't be loss of rewards or rewards that uh, could have been had but haven't because of the uh, the, uh, the ungodly life or this the, the static life that we've lived here on earth God is wanting to bless us but then uh, he'll reward us later on as well and uh, so much more and uh, well Peter doesn't want us to miss out on all of uh, this God wants us to invest in the world to come and we'll never be disappointed but even here on earth when we seek to live this godly life and to be productive in our lives uh, as we get to know him uh, then uh, we find that it's very worthwhile and even if the journey might even be tough it's still worthwhile and there is still joy in serving him however difficult uh, that might uh, be and so uh, as uh, Peter starts out in this letter yes he knows what's coming he knows what's uh, happening for the church and uh, well as we come to end times too we see how the church is going to go through many difficulties and there are going to be those who bring in wrong teachings and so on and well uh, if we're going to stand firm then we need to know we need to know our God intimately we need to know our, our Lord and Saviour we need to be those who are on the journey moving on growing in our knowledge and our experience of him and when these things come in we'll be able to put a finger on it and say hey that is wrong that's not right and we stick uh, to uh, the truth and then uh, in the last uh, five verses here we see Peter's uh, uh, concern for the word of uh, God and uh, he uh, verse 16 let's read it uh, for we were not making up clever stories when you told you about the powerful coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We saw his majestic splendor with our own eyes when he received honor and glory from God the Father. The voice from the majestic glory of God said to him, This is my dearly loved Son who brings me great joy. We ourselves heard that voice from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. And so... Uh, Peter takes us back to that, uh, that Mount of Transfiguration with Peter, James and John when they saw the glory part of Jesus shine through and uh, well it was an amazing experience. He was, he was on top of the world after seeing the Lord Jesus uh, in this state. But we see how that they had to come back down into the valley and uh, that was where Jesus was doing his ministry among uh, those who were hurting and so on. And uh, yes, uh, uh, Peter, uh, it was a never to be forgotten experience. And uh, well, that experience just made him more sure, more sure uh, of uh, the things uh, that uh, he uh, had read. It made him more sure about the message the prophets uh, gave. And uh, we trace the the journey of the disciples and we see how that yes they were looking for this Messiah and his glory and setting up his kingdom and so on and uh, well as we trace the three-year ministry of the Lord Jesus we see how that uh, hey uh, he's rejected by his own people and uh, well uh, that kingdom wasn't going to be restored at that time and uh, maybe uh, maybe all of the followers were going to say hey we're giving this up as a bad job uh, but no, after that experience of Peter, he was sure that what the prophets were speaking about, it would all come true. It would all uh, come uh, true. And uh, verses 19 uh, through uh, to 21. Because of that experience, we have even greater confidence in the message proclaimed by the prophets. You must pay close attention to what they wrote, for their words are like a lamp shining in a dark place. Until the day dawns and, the, and Christ, the morning star, shines in your hearts. Above all, you must realise that no prophecy in Scripture ever came from the prophet's own understanding or from human initiative. No, those prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit and they spoke from God. The prophets spoke about many things. They spoke about present things in the times in which they uh, lived. But they also spoke about the future 
and uh, future events concerning uh, God's people, Israel, his earthly people. God made promises to them. Uh, some of those promises have been, uh, have been fulfilled. But there are other things that God promised to his people, uh, Israel. And, uh, well, those promises, they are absolutely sure. Peter believed that. He believed that these things would one day come true. I wonder this morning whether we believe that, yes, every word, every promise that God has said is true and will come true in the end. And uh, we see how that, yes, he's the God who cannot uh, uh, lie. And uh, even events that still haven't taken place, Peter was sure after seeing Christ's glory that these things that have been written would one day come to pass. Do we still believe it? There are those who would say that, no, we spiritualise it. We, uh, yes, we know that God has said this in the past, but that isn't going to come true. It means something else. And so we move it and put it in another camp. It's going to happen to here. Poor old Abraham, if that was true. If God can go back on his word, or God can move the goalposts. No. God gives us his word and it is totally reliable. If he said it, he'll do it. If he said it, he'll do it, then we can believe it. We can accept it. It's the word of God. It never uh, changes. And uh, we, uh, we see uh, uh, how that, uh, uh, yes, there was, uh, there was uh, promises for God's people, uh, Israel. Uh, but uh, we also see uh, how that as well as having a plan for Israel, we see how the, the prophets spoke about the first coming of the Lord Jesus. Uh, we see Micah pointing out where he'd been born. We see uh, the prophets speaking about not only his birth, but his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension into heaven. And guess what? It's all come true. <laughs> Every single thing has come true. But there are things about the Lord Jesus that were prophesied that still haven't happened. What's going to happen? They're all going to come true. But then we also see that there are promises for the church. That uh, way back uh, uh, before, uh, before the Acts, these things weren't really uh, known. And well, we see how the, uh, God has made promises uh, to uh, his, his church, his uh, heavenly uh, people. And uh, what is going to happen there? Well, uh, they too uh, are going to uh, not be disappointed. God will keep uh, all of his promises uh, to us. We can actually, uh, we can uh, believe it. We, we, we've got his guarantee, his word uh, on it. So we see how, uh, yes, uh, the word of God, Peter says, is like a, a light in this dark world. And it's the only dependable light we have. And so when Peter says, get to know uh, your God, get to know that your Lord and Saviour, uh, it's the only dependable truth that we have. And uh, there are those who, uh, who look to the media. Do we believe what we, what we uh, see on the telly, what we read in the newspapers? Most people are saying no. Well, why do we read the newspapers and, and watch the telly and all the rest of it? Well, we kind of have to, but hey, it's, it's kind of, often it's very warped, isn't it? And it's not quite the truth. It, it might be the truth from that angle, from how that person sees it, but whether it's actually the truth or not, we're not sure. And uh, just in the recent troubles in, uh, in, uh, in Israel and Gaza, uh, there was a friend of ours who said, look, uh, watch this news. And you'll get a, a fairer picture of what is going on. And uh, yes, we can't necessarily trust the uh, media. Uh, what about science? Can we trust science? So many people put their trust, their faith in, in science. Well, I think the last 18 months or so have shown us that uh, yeah, it changes as new evidence is revealed. And guess what? It might change again in another week's time or so. <laughs> okay. Because they don't have the big picture. They don't know everything. But the God of the Bible who has, who has communicated his word, his truth to us, he has the big picture. He knows the end from the beginning. Every word is reliable, is trustworthy. 
and uh, well, uh, he'll do what he says. And uh, education, uh, does, uh, is that dependable? No. So many things that uh, we can't uh, rely upon. And uh, yes, the world stumbles around in the darkness, going around in circles. But we have the Word of God to read it, to put it into practice, to obey it, and to pass on until Christ comes to take his people, the church, at home. Are we those who are living in the light of his uh, return? Are we ready to meet him? The Spirit of God, Peter says, wrote the Word of God, and we can take it as a whole. Old and New Testament, we see how that God was in it from end to beginning, putting into the minds of these people to write the things that he wants us to know, the things that tell us about him. And, uh, well, we have the Holy Spirit of God who indwells us, who will teach us as we read his word, and he will uh, make it uh, real to us, and he will, uh, he will help us, he will guide us uh, into uh, the truth. And so uh, here as we uh, look at uh, chapter 1, we see that, yes, uh, Peter is concerned for those around him. Feed my sheep and uh, so on. Caring for the flock. Yeah, there were troubles coming. And uh, this was how, how Peter uh, would encourage us to make sure that we stand firm. And it's not being static in our Christian journey, but now moving on, growing in our knowledge of God and our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. And paying attention to the Scriptures. It's the only truth, the only light we have. Let's pray. Father, indeed, uh, we thank you for our time together this morning and we thank you for your word. We pray, Lord, that it would become ever more precious to us. Thank you that uh, through it you're able to speak to us. Thank you that the Holy Spirit of God is indwelling us and is able to guide us and to, uh, as we read your word, to teach us the truth. And uh, Lord, we pray that each of us would have this desire to grow more and more and to live godly lives so that we can live productive lives, so that we can bring great pleasure to you. Thank you, Lord, that you've done so much for us and uh, you're willing to do even more. And uh, we uh, pray that uh, we would experience in our day-to-day -day lives, even here on earth, all the riches uh, that you have for us and uh, and uh, grace and we pray lord that uh, we would uh, indeed be those who shine in a dark world help us too to be those who uh, yes have a love for uh, for those who belong to you but also a love for the world too and uh, we pray that during these days we would rescue the perishing before it's too late help us to tell them about jesus and of his love for them. Thank you, Lord, that uh, you have done so much uh, for us, but you've also done it for everyone else too. And uh, we pray that in these days we have the joy of hearing of others coming to know you as their personal saviour. We uh, pray, Lord, that you would bless our fellowship. We know, Lord, these are difficult times. Pray for those who've been discouraged, those who uh, perhaps have uh, have just lost the desire to uh, to read your word or to uh, to uh, meet with your people and we pray lord that very soon we would all feel uh, that we can come along and join together and uh, just encourage one another uh, around your word and so we do uh, commit ourselves now to your loving care for those who are sick for those who are uh, who have uh, particular struggles we commit them to you and ask lord for your blessing upon them restoration. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen.